Ah, Palermo. A beautiful city located on the northwest side of Sicily, also its capital. Now, this city is unique because you get to see mountains, trees, and cars. Lots and lots of cars. It's a pretty busy city. And they even got like telephone booths at the side of the road. It's sort of like a mixture between the old and the new. Because ultimately, this city has a history of more than 2,700 years. So I'm pretty sure it's gonna be an awesome city to explore. But I'm gonna be honest, um, we came down all the way from Rome mainly for Noto, for Cafe Sicilia. So we are actually only here for about 24 hours. Hence, we're gonna do a 24 hours in Palermo. What can you eat? It's gonna be a very quick touch and go on the foods that Palermo has to offer. Definitely not a full food exploration for Palermo. So fellow Palermo citizens, if you're watching this vlog, let us know what are the great foods. Leave the comments down below. We will definitely come back for a proper Palermo food exploration. With that said, let's head to the market. What's the name of the market? Marketo. <laughs> I'm sorry guys, we, we didn't really like like do a very proper homework Makoto Di Balaro I think there are two very popular markets This is one of them We're gonna, only gonna do one because we only have a day So let's go The market Mercato di Balaro It's literally like a wet market in Malaysia For Malaysians you will know It's our morning market there's just so much things happening. Just listen to the sound around me. People selling vegetables, fresh fruits, very vibrant colors. You've got fish, also of seafood, octopus, squid. Even people cutting large chunks of fish. And I believe there was a tuna, a really huge tuna, with his eyes staring back at me. That is so exciting. And you've got people selling foods as well. There's like raw seafood they can just consume straight off the stall. You've got cooked foods. There's this lady frying up aubergine and lots of seafood based products because it is a coastal city isn't it so we're gonna look for some food in the market uh we're gonna look at it. i think there's a there's a guy doing like barbecue octopus ah right there that's that guy doing barbecue octopus let's go Alright guys, uh, I know we saw the octopus guy over there but we decided to start with this. It's a, a bun. This is a beef sandwich. So out, outside you got some form of chewy bread and inside it's basically a mixture of beef organs like offals. Ah yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and the owner is asking me to quickly eat this. So what, what they do is I think they sprinkle with a very little bit of like uh, spices, a little bit of seasoning, a drizzle of lemon. Anyway, let's quickly go because maybe it will get soggy, right? Salty, a little bit chewy, beefy, umami that comes with it. I can get why the locals love this. Mmm, very nice. Bread, bread is chewy. It's a chewy bread. You taste the toasted sesame up top, the sesame flavor. The beef with it is really a very, very simple tasting flavor. You get a little bit of tang, very mild tang for the lemon, which contrasts really well with the organ meats. The organ meats have this flavor in them. Do you get like smoked meats? I'm not sure. Mm. It's so simple, but I would say it's delicious. It's a very simple, delicious street food. By the way, guys, while you're eating this beautiful beef sandwich, grab this. I don't know what it is, it's a, a carbonated drink. I think it's lime flavored. A mouth of this. Oh, very refreshing. It pairs really well with this. But this is quite salty. Yeah, get this. Good pair. Guys, we are done. Sold out. It's only 10. It's sold out. Let's hit for the octopus now. 
So this guy over there, apparently he's selling some octopus, literally dropping the octopus raw into this huge stainless steel boiling pot. And then it either goes on the grill or it's on the side and it's just steaming hot. When the customer orders, he picks one up, chops into pieces, a drizzle of olive oil, some seasoning, and a squeeze of lemon juice. And then there you go, you're ready to eat. Hey guys, we got the octopus guy and the octopus is quite expensive. Half my octopus is five bucks. And we already shop, they're playing really loud music. I don't know if we can make it through quickly. Let us try the octopus first. The one with the boy one. Very chewy. Not much of flavor. A little bit of the lemon. I know it's usual oil and seasoning, but not much. Okay, let me try the barbecue one. Hopefully, it's better. Uh, I think I'll get quite to put in more lemon. Lemony flavor. I think I, I personally think it's overcooked, which is why it's very rubbery. Octopus should have a bite to it, a, a chew to it, but not rubbery. This is quite rubbery. So yeah. Okay, music starting. Gotta add this here. Let's try another spot. Alright, done with the octopus man. Personally not recommended. Uh, I think it's too chewy. Anyway, we're gonna do a quick sweep around the market and then we'll move on to the next spot. I think we're having some arancini obviously. You're in Sicily, you're gonna have some arancini, which is like a cousin to the soupy. This become this. Oh, you. She hold the. I have a strong arm, army mozzarella. <laughs> nice, nice. Thank Very you. Very nice. Wow. You're an artisan. We are an association of artisans and we are like teachers for many poor kids. It's a charity shop oh. and everything is made so many recycled. Yes. Thank you. Nino. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Nino. Thank you, Fabio. Ciao. Yeah, nice yeah, to meet yeah. you. Ciao. Just passed by this artisanal shop where there are two artisans. One is uh, Mr. Fabio, he's doing this leather belts. I think the leather is from Florence. Very interesting uh, craft. And Mr. Nino, he prints things on anything that's a, a flat surface, he prints on. There we go. And it's just really interesting. They even got all these, um, within his paintings, when he prints people, there's this guy with a hat and with moustache. Uh, that is Fabio. He <laughs> actually prints Fabio into these pictures. It's really interesting and they're really friendly and share all these things with us. Yeah, it's a great experience so far in the market. So let's see what else we can get. Hello. Hello. <laughs> All right, here comes the segment for your most useless tour guide in history. Me, Wei Lun. I'm going to tell you about this thing. This thing over here, I believe it is a church. I don't know anything else about it. Apparently what is famous is the top three things, uh, the three domes. I think they're supposedly four and one fell off. I think one is supposed to be like up here and it sort of fell off. There is a description board up front regarding this chair. So I'm just going to leave it there for five seconds for you to read it. Okay, that's enough. Anyway, apologies. I know it's a... <laughs> It's not very useful information, but we were walking to the Arancini place and we saw this. So I thought I wanted to show it to you guys. On to the Arancini spot. Aha! I think that is another tourist spot. Again, useless tour guide spot number two. Yep, this is the Pretoria fountain. I think basically it's a fountain. Uh, yeah, it's a fountain. Let's just enjoy the close up shots. Okay, hopefully that's enough close-up. Arancini. Yes, this time it will be the Arancini, I promise you guys. Yeah, let's go. Guys, I lied. We are at our tourist spot right down from the fountain. This is the Piazza Vigliana, I think. It is a borough square of Palermo. Just take a look at this. So on the four corners are these nice walls with all the statues and stuff. Yep. Down below, there's this street that apparently is very happening. There's like bars and foods and stuff. So yeah, if you're in Palermo, I don't know, you can try these places out. Let's get for the Arancini now. Like seriously, I promise you, no more tourist spots. Guys, right behind me is the shop selling the Arancini and I believe it's called E. 
Kokini. I think it's quite popular uh, because it's just hidden like in this small little tunnel you have to walk in and then there's this small little area here where people start queuing and they do not allow us to film anything inside. So Kurt is in there queuing up to buy uh, the arancini and I'll just wait here and we will start eating once she comes out. Okay guys, let us try the arancini and I got some things also but later show you. So now actually it's raining. Let's quickly start this. It looks a bit smaller because what I expected is twice the size of the chipotle. Anyways, let's break it and see what is inside. Ooh, look at the inside. The rice looks a bit soft and the ragu, ragu basically is a tomato sauce with beef. Let's try. Mm, the rice is mushy. Yeah, we are a little bit salty. And the bread crumb outside actually is a crunchy but there's no any oil fragrance. Let me try the one with more ragu. Mm, there's some um, tomato tang, a little bit salty. But actually, it's, the ragu is so small portion. You see, there's one mouth on it. Yeah. So. Mm. Anyway, we got another thing which is, uh, I'm sure I'll pronounce it wrong. Uh, literal pronunciation is a panze roti. We got this at McDonald's before and that was filled with mozzarella and tomato. It was pretty tasty, or a bit simple. So we got this one, I think this is different. The ingredients inside are, let me, let me just open it up. Oh, this is more, uh, really like a bready texture, a bit soft and chewy. Oh, <laughs> the inside is, I think it's a cherry tomato with anchovies and cheese. Um, I'm going to eat the part with the ingredient because the other, the other part is just cheese. Anchovy is good. Nice anchovy umami, despite it being so small. Don't really taste much of the cheese. Tomato is a nice juiciness. The bread is chewy, it's soft. A little bit of lingering sweetness. It's a very simple tasting snack. It's really not bad. It's just... You probably have better ones around in Palermo, I'm sure. Yeah. So that's it um, for this spot. I think we need to get something like refreshing. It's pretty oily. Next question is gelato. We are at Gelateria El Casaro and this time we try our gelato in brioche type. We got two flavors, one is pistachio and the other one is black cherry. This is very interesting, it's a chocolate with cherry and topped with a whipping cream and a biscuit. Let's try with the black cherry. Mm. The chocolate flavor is very strong but in the same time it disappears very quickly and you can taste in the chocolate, there's a slightly cherry taste, the tanginess. Let's try a pistachio. Mm. For a pistachio, mainly it's sweetness. You can still taste the pistachio taste, but if compared with the Cafe Sicilia, it will be a huge difference. That is a brioche, definitely you can tell. A little bit buttery, soft, nice chew. You can still taste the savouriness of the bar. Actually, I think it's a quite quite a good combination. Yeah, this is a, I would say it's a really decent gelato. But compared to where we came from, Cafe Sicilia obviously is, is a huge difference. It's just two completely different classes. Compared to our favorite in Rome, I think I think Gracie is still better because this is really more sugar heavy. Uh, for lack of a better phrase, not as natural. Remember when I told you about most of our experience, you take it and after a while it becomes very sweet and it bogs you down. This is one of those spots. And we don't get this generally from like Rachi or Cafe Sicilia. So this is this is still decent, lah, but, but it's really more like an ice cream now. Yeah, it does bog me down quite a bit. Yeah, anyway, see you guys in a bit. Okay guys, before we start with the playing time segment, there's something I need to say about this cafe. This is what I got, the pistachio espresso, I think. Mm. Look at the picture on my phone, on the menu, and look at what I got. <laughs> this is huge, 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 huge. It's not just a huge difference, it's like false advertising. I mean, to be honest, really, I feel that like it's all false advertising. Because this is 270 euros. 
Anyway, let's start with the beef waffle sandwich spot in the market. I think overall it's a really decent sandwich, despite it being a, also a rather simple sandwich. Mm. If you just look at the ingredients, the beef offals, they are basically just salted and they drizzle some lemon on. And it has its own umami of the awful flavour, okay? like a little bit of that bitterness. Because it's fried in lard, so it's got that oil fragrance as well. Mm. That oozes out, along with, if I'm not mistaken, like I mentioned, a little bit of that smoky flavour. And I think the bread is a perfect vehicle to hold all these juicy ingredients. It has got a nice chewiness with a good big fragrance. And the added sesame seeds up top really helps give it that much needed flavour depth as well. That said, it is still ultimately a street food. The flavour harmonisation might not be very balanced throughout the entire sandwich. And certain parts might be a little bit too rubbery. And taking all those into consideration, I would say this spot is scores an okay on the gourmet plate. Which means it is some good quality sandwich right there. Absolutely recommended if you're in the market area. However, do bear in mind that you need to be able to accept the flavors of offers. Mm. Yeah. Oh, by the way, don't forget to get the lime carbonated drink because it's really very good when it's paired with the sandwich. Yeah. yeah so right. get that. Yeah. Mm. On to the next octopus. The man selling this is actually very, very jovial person yeah. and a lot of theatrics. I like the way he sort of sings to the music and chops out his octopus. La. Yeah, yeah, very happening. But yeah. the octopus is very rubbery and tasteless, I would yeah. say. Yeah. And the man charges 5 euro for half octopus. Yeah. It's a very, very expensive. Very expensive, la. it's really steep yeah, for, for a price. Yeah. For this kind of, I mean, mediocre taste yes. octopus. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so hence, it scores. Zero? Yep, it's because of zero on the gourmet plate, which means uh, it's, it's just really mediocre. Mm. Like, I, I, I rarely say this, but I would say you don't have to eat from this store. Yeah, because you the really texture and the taste also not Yeah, it's, it's definitely overcooked, right it's good. rubbery. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And next, Arancini. Yep. Arancini has a real light batter mm. and then the balance and harmonizing flavor. But the amount of the ragu is too little. So what we can taste is more heavy on the rice, causing lack of simon. Yeah, because we have actually tried other arancini spots as well. And to be honest, right, this is actually the most harmonious tasting. Mm. And you could immediately tell the ingredients are really like proper and good. Mm -hmm. The ragu actually tastes very good. It's a really good arancini in terms of flavour. It's just that the flavour is too little. The whole flavour balance is tilted towards rice, rice. which is rather flavourless, right? Mm. Yeah, and I think the panzi roti as well suffers from the same problem. Yeah, but we have tried the other's pastry after that. Yeah, the like the bread. Yeah, the bread surprisingly tastes good. Yeah, mm. it is. It's soft and then chewy and I think there's this pizza bread, right? Mm. Like cheese with tomato. Oh, this is actually very, it's a very simple, simple. bread, but it's pretty tasty. Mm. So I would say, if you're neighbor, you can really try them out. Like. Just bear in mind that the feeling is really very little. So you might find that it's not as tasty as it could have been. It's like a place that has immense potential, mm. but due to maybe price ceiling, mm -hmm. uh, it loses out on that yeah, potential. To so be I hope they can add on the feeling. Yeah, and yeah. then just charge more, seriously. Yeah, yeah and with that being said, uh, they score an honorable mention mm. on the Gomi plate, which means it is um, still pretty decent arancini and I would say pretty good breads too. If you're nearby, definitely try them out. Like. Just bear in mind that the feelings are uh, pretty skimpy. <laughs> So go to the last gelato. Overall, it's really it's very really sweet, sweet. La, I would say. Yeah. yeah. It does lean heavy and it, it bogs you down ultimately, mm -hmm. which shouldn't happen with mm -hmm. very good gelatos. Actually, I know you say really, it's not bad. If you have not tasted gelato before, that means if your ice cream has always been Hagen Dazs, Baskin Robbins, Ben and Jerry's, this is way ahead. The texture is right. So it's a very rich mouth feel, very smooth. The only problem is once you have tasted quite a few of the good gelatos like Rachi in Rome and especially Cafe Sicilia in Noto, you will notice the weaknesses. Yeah, the yeah. Like, it's like, not as natural as yeah, it could have been. Right. Yeah, it's yeah. not as natural as it could have been. Mm. It could be way more natural than this. Mm. Uh, it's still pretty decent, I would say. Uh, definitely better than ice creams. It does boil you down. It's, it's sweet towards mm. the end. Yeah. So with that being said, Gerardo Al Casaro score honorable mention in the gourmet pick. Yep, which means it's a pretty decent gelato. I think in Palomo is probably one of the better ones, actually. So if you are in Palomo, then you can definitely try that out. Yeah. So, hope you enjoyed this food vlog. I mean, it's a really touch and go episode. Again, for people who have visited Palomo and Palomo guys, let us know what are the, like, the really good spots. We will be back. We promise you. When we come to Italy, when we come to Sicily, we will be back. We will try out these spots and then we will do a proper full exploration. Hope you enjoyed this food vlog. If you did, do consider giving us a thumbs up. If you yet to subscribe, do consider subscribing and hit that notification bell button. 
Uh, next week we'll be heading back to Rome. So you'll see us in Rome. I know we haven't like, covered a lot of ground on Rome. La. We haven't gone to the Pantheon. We haven't found the true meaning of our dente in pasta. So join us next week. Yeah, join us next week. <laughs> okay, this thing is getting a little too long. See you. Bye.